the Horticulture IPM Specialist for the University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Service. And today I wanted to talk to you about some pesky spring pests that you'll encounter in blackberries. First off, I think it's important to just recognize that we have a lot of identification help um, for both insect pest and disease pest. And it's great to remind your stakeholders that they can contact their local extension agents. Um, they can place plants in paper sacks, not plastic, um, to be sent for diagnosis and to send the whole plant if that plant is wilted because it's very important that the diagnostician receives the roots. Also, high quality pictures can be sent in and emailed to your local extension agent or your extension specialist. So the first time period I would like to speak about is when the shoots are six inches long to pre-bloom. So during this time period, we're gonna see a few different types of pests, both insects and diseases. And the first insect pest we'll start seeing is the strawberry clipper. And then some diseases is cane and leaf rust, orange rust, and yellow rust. So a little bit about strawberry clipper damage. The strawberry clipper lays eggs in the developing buds. Those buds will be clipped and fall to the ground. The larvae will feed within those flowers, crawl out of the flower and pupate in the soil. The adult beetle will emerge and then it will overwinter in the debris. And this is what that adult beetle looks like. It's actually a weevil, which means it has a really long snout. And it's fairly small. You can see it in, in reference to the size of, of that bud right there. And they start emerging in April and May. And this shows the damage. You can see the clipped buds. It looks like the little flower bud is just about to fall off the plant. And then if you look in the top right, you can see where the buds have already fallen off and been clipped. You can monitor for strawberry clipper, and this is what we recommend doing weekly after first bloom. You want to check 100 clusters for clipped buds or stems. If you find 1% clipped buds or any newly clipped buds, um, you want to recommend spraying. You can also just, just monitor the clusters by beating them over a white tray. You wanna do about 100. And if you find any weevils, um, you want to recommend putting out a pesticide spray. Now these pesticides should be applied at 10 day intervals until there are no weevils present and no new damage when you're monitoring. For strawberry clipper control, and there's a few insecticides labeled and you want to refer to your bramble spray guide um, or your local state spray guide and there's a great spray guide that you can download from the southern region small fruit consortium website and that has everything specific to brambles and a few things that are labeled are danitol octara and seven now I want to talk about the rusts and the rusts are a little bit complicated because they all look the same but their management is quite different. So it's very important that if you see rust that you get it identified correctly. So send it in to a diagnostician um, that has um, experience with rust and this will help you out. Applications for rust should um, start soon after bud break and continue about every 10 to 14 days. Remember, it's very important to rotate the FRAC numbers and look at the restrictions on your fungicide labels. Um, rust can build resistance to fungicides and that's why this is so important. So right here, this is yellow rust. And yellow rust, um, you can find it on the undersides of leaves. And we're seeing this um, quite a bit more in our blackberries than we have in the past. To manage yellow rust, um, 
you use fungicide applications and um, refer to your spray guides and a couple of examples of things you can use is Cabrio or Pristine. So managed fairly easily with just some early fungicide application. Cane and leaf rust. The fluorocanes are usually the first to show symptoms and this looks a little bit more orange. It can be found on the canes and the leaves. And the management here, you want to make sure that you prune out the infected canes because they're not productive. And also you want to start a fungicide program and to help prevent the spread of this rust. The next one is orange rust. Orange rust is the most pathogenic and you can see that it causes these large orange pustules on the bottoms of the leaves. It really weakens those shoots. You want to remove the whole plant in the spring that's infected and then start fungicide program to help prevent the spread. So the next time period I want to talk about is the bloom period. And during the bloom period, the rusts are also going to be an issue, but the management is really the same as the six inch shoot period. And then we have a host of other diseases that become issues. And Botrytis gray mold, anthracnose, cane blight, spur blight, and powdery mildew. I'm gonna talk about a few of these. So first off, Botrytis. Botrytis has been a huge issue for us the past two years. We've had really cool wet springs, which is just ideal for Botrytis to reproduce. And Botrytis causes dried up berries and the fruit to rot. And it produces this gray fruiting body. So sometimes you'll hear this referred to as gray mold. A great way to help lessen and botrytis load out there is to make sure your plants are pruned correctly because air circulation helps drying of the plants which really really helps with not just botrytis control but a lot of different diseases and you can use fungicides for management a good fungicide management program in place um, will definitely help with botrytis next off anthracnose Anthracnose causes purplish spots um, on the canes and the leaves. It can also cause the droplets um, to look dry. It looks similar to Botrytis. Besides, you won't see the gray fruiting bodies. Dormant applications are the most important for combating anthracnose. This year, um, we had a lot of growers that, that missed the time period for Norman application. Everything was running ahead. We had a sort of a warm early spring. Generally this application would go out I mean, early February and it would be lime sulfur or, or sulfurex. Um, you want to continue with fungicide applications after that first dormant application if there is heavy pressure, if you see a lot of those lesions on those canes, continue fungicide applications. Cane blight. I've seen this increase over the past few years. Um, it's really bad in wet years. And what you'll see is dieback of the canes and the canes will look sort of grayish. And if you get a hand lens and look at them closely, um, it'll look like pepper all over the outside of the cane. To manage for cane blight, you can use fungicides at six to eight inches, then 12 to 15 inches, and then you wanna do another application three weeks later. Um, also, you can utilize some cultural techniques. Pruning can be effective if you use tipping techniques instead of severely pruning. That helps a lot with managing cane blight. And then also you want to get rid of any infected canes. Spur blight. Spur blight generally has not been an issue for us. It may be in other areas, but you'll see a darkened 
area um, around that fruiting spur and it will completely destroy that fruiting spur. So something to be aware of and look out for. The next time period um, I wanted to talk about is petal fall. During petal fall we have a couple of insect pests that are pretty important. We have our stink bugs and our redneck cane borers. Now stink bugs, there's two main types that are problems for us. Um, the brown stink bug on the left and then the green stink bug on the right. Now the adult stink bugs have wings that come all the way down to their tips of their abdomen. And the nymphs do not have fully formed wings. And you can see on the right with the green stink bug, the nymph looks quite different than the adult. It's sort of black and green and has some orange spots. The adults will emerge from debris um, in around April and then they'll mate. They'll lay eggs in May and the eggs are generally white barrel shaped eggs that are laid in clusters. May to harvest, the nymphs and adults will feed on the fruit and the fed on fruit actually tastes like a stink bug, so not very appetizing at all. It also causes deformed droops. You can see in the picture on the left. The picture in the middle just shows you that there's different sizes of nymphs. So each time that nymph will molt and grow just a little bit bigger until it becomes an adult. And then that last picture shows um, the barrel shaped eggs and the little stink bugs emerging. Stink bug monitoring um, is important. You can monitor clusters for the stink bug nymphs. Also there are traps available. So you can use a yellow pyramid trap baited with a pheromone. We make our traps out of plywood and then we use a mesh screen to make a funnel and then we just invert another mesh screen over the top. Um, it makes a really great trap. You want to make sure to time your insecticide sprays to manage the nymphs and you'll be much more successful with stink bug management because the adults are very difficult to manage um, with insecticide. Here's some data that um, Dr. Don Johnson and myself uh, put together a while back looking at different efficacy for different chemicals. And you can see Octara did a really great job on stink bug. We also had some success with spinosad. And refer to your spray guide to see what's registered in your state. And then also you can look at the Southern Region Small Fruit Consortium Guide. And Octara Brigade and Danitol are labeled. One thing to keep in mind um, with these insecticides is there's always a pre-harvest interval and some of these are at least three days. So keep that in mind and then another thing is Mustang Max is registered for spotted wing Drosophila control and the PHI on this is one day and if you're managing for spotted wing drosophila, you're probably picking up some stink bug control. The redneck cane borer. The redneck cane borer is a buprestid beetle. It has sort of a metallic red neck. That's where it gets its name. You can see that in the bottom picture. The adults emerge in late April to July. The beetles will feed on the primocane leaves and then they'll lay their eggs on the cane and the larvae will chew into the cane and it causes tissue to form around the larvae that creates this gall. And this gall can girdle that cane and reduce the winter survival of your canes. Um, you want to monitor weekly starting in May for the adults on the primocane leaves. And then if in March more than 5% of those canes are galled you want to begin cultural control, which just means pruning out those in infested canes um, and burning them. By April 1st, if you have more than 5% galled canes, you want to put out a soil drench of admire, and that'll do a good job. 
I just want to mention weed control briefly. Um, you can utilize pre-emergent herbicides in blackberry production. Um, I recommend applying them at multiple times during the year. Um, the first application, it's always good to get out in November or December to help combat um, winter annual weeds. And then to come back in um, February so you can get ahead of your spring weeds. Um, there's a couple of post-emergent herbicides that you can use, Sandia and Post. Um, and then a lot of folks also use Gramoxone for cleanup. But make sure that you refer to your state's um, spray guides to see what's registered in your area. I'm um, also utilizing mulch if it's a smaller planting. And then landscape fabric can do a great job for weed control. Here's an example of a study that we're doing um, with some pre-emergent herbicides. The picture on the left shows surfland and sinbar, and this was applied um, in February. And then the picture on the right is our control, and you can see that we've done a really great job um, with our, our grass and broadleaf control there. And then just really quick, wanted to point out resistance management is very important. And in your spray guide, um, you can see that on the right hand side, under the comments, it is listed the FRAC or the IRAC code. And just make sure that you always recommend um, rotating between these numbers and not spraying more than twice before you rotate. Thank you.